What do you think we're going to talk about? Our Locked On Spartans, your daily podcast on the Michigan State Spartans, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Spartan friends, Spartan family, Lock on Spartans listeners. Hey, thanks. So, you know what? Uh, Iowa fans, too. I'm sure there's Michigan fans in here. I, there's a lot, probably a lot of fans in here because that was a historic collapse. So let's just all get in on the fun here. Thanks a lot for tuning in. Locked on Spartans, your team in green and white every single day. Great. Okay. We're going to do this. Uh, okay. We're recording a few minutes after uh, the game. Michigan State has a historic collapse down in Iowa. Before going any further, I, I want to deeply apologize to everyone right now, whether you are on Twitter, if you're not, if you missed it, if you believe in jinxes, if you believe in just powers like that, I I have nothing to say other than I'm sorry. Yes, I did put out a video on Twitter celebrating the win when Michigan State was up 13 points with 90 seconds to go. We do this a lot on this uh, on this show is, is jinx things. I, I thought that being up 13 points with 90 seconds left, it's good enough. It was not. And I I feel sick to my stomach and I apologize if you believe in stuff like that. Because I do. Now, if you don't believe in stuff like that, if you just want to talk basketball, what actually happened, well, I got great news for you. That's what we're going to talk about um, for the rest of this little segment here. I, <laughs> what do you, I, I didn't even know what to say. I, like, yeah, th- there's a whole debate of who do you blame? The, the players or the coach? You score 101 points in regulation in college basketball. That should be enough to win you a game. Uh, Look, you got to credit Iowa for their hot shooting at the end of the game as much as you have to discredit Michigan State and how they fell apart at the end of that game. Right now, sure, let's talk about the adult in the room, Tom Izzo. Great guy. Look, he's he's been fantastic for this university. Um, You know, not just the last two, three decades he's been here. But the last two weeks, you know, I, I want to make that very clear. It's been incredible for this university. Uh, now we're going to separate the human from the coach right now because, holy, I'm not. Oh, I'm going to try not to swear this podcast, but holy crap, what are we saving the timeouts for, Tom? Uh, as you are up 13 points with 90 seconds to go, you don't call a timeout until there's 19 seconds left in the game, and now you're leading by just five. We, we didn't see anything unraveling before that point. We just wanted to tuck these timeouts deep in our pockets, see if we could use them for the Nebraska game or carry them over into the Big Ten tournament. No idea what that was about. But, yes, if you are going to cry about coaching, which I am, and I'm doing it because, once again, we've seen this happen throughout this season, last season. I mean, this was a mirror of what happened in the first round against Maryland in the Big Ten tournament last season. Just the team is drowning. They're drowning, and uh, timeouts, why use them? No, they, they're going to figure it out eventually, right? No, of course they're not, and they didn't today. Um, now, as far as uh, the last few seconds go, Michigan State was up three. Iowa had the ball, and a lot of people are saying, uh, hey, well, it should have intentionally fouled, put Iowa on the line for two shots. And normally I would agree if there was less time on the clock. I mean, Iowa started that possession with 10 seconds. They got the shot off with three seconds. We're kind of a little close there, but yeah, obviously in hindsight probably should have fouled, but I see why they didn't in the moment. Um, just no execution down the, the stretch. Oh, overtime, you didn't have to watch overtime. You knew what was going to happen in overtime. Uh, Iowa just... Got the ball rolling with all the momentum in the world. Michigan State just did a a whole lot of of nothing. And now what we're looking at here is you can kiss the double bye in the Big Ten tournament goodbye. If you've listened to yesterday's show, you'll know that the Minnesota game being rescheduled has close to no impact on if MSU gets a double bye here. There's a lot of myths that like, oh, it's win percentage. And this game against Minnesota would actually help Michigan State a lot get that double bye. That's completely false. Um, The big game was this one. If they won out their last three games, which this was the toughest one, and it looked like things were okay, up 13 points and 90 seconds left. If they won the last three games of the regular season, they would have got the double bye. But since they lost, it's close to impossible to get a double bye now. This also would have punched Michigan State's ticket officially into March Madness. Yes, that they could still lose their next three games if you count 
the Nebraska game, the Ohio State game, the first game of the Big Ten tournament. They could still make it probably as a first four game. But, uh, yeah, if you win one of these next two games, you're probably going to be in, but that would have been a nice stamp. And to finally get a really good road Big Ten win because so far the road Big Ten wins are Penn State, Wisconsin, and Ohio State. Okay, we're looking at three teams that might not even make the tournament. So there's no impressive road Big Ten wins that this team has had. And it looked like they were going to get it for the longest time. And, uh, hey, maybe we start surging up in March Madness as well. This is how we start making a push to a sixth seed, if you will. But now that you lost this game, you're running out of opportunities to have good wins on your schedule. This was the last quad one win that you could have gotten. Maybe you'll get an opportunity in the Big Ten tournament, but – Hey, when you're up 13 with 90 seconds left, it really just seemed like a good opportunity. Now, I know that a lot of us are going to be looking at the last 90 seconds of regulation and overtime. Complete and utter choke job. And that is what also hurts, is that not just the seeding for the Big Ten tournament, not just the seeding for March Madness, but also let's go between the ears now. Because we've seen this team collapse late in games time and time again. Uh, go all the way back to the Portland game, or heck, even further than that, the Villanova game. But they eked out wins in those as well. We've seen them, though, collapse in games and also lose. The last seven minutes against Illinois. The Michigan game last week. And now this one. And now you have this monkey on your back going into March Madness. This is supposed to be the time where you are a shark late in games. And you smell blood in the water and you pounce. You close out games. Now this team has this juju around them that, uh uh-oh, hey, just because we're up doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to win this game. And yeah, this might seem like silly, you know, just, hey, sitting on a bar stool talking sports with the guys over a few beers nonsense. But no, you do see teams get very contagious in losing like this. What better time to have the most devastating loss in that fashion than, oh, with just a week left to go in the regular season. So yeah, up 13 with 90 seconds left. Heck, I I said it in the stupid video that I put out on Twitter that, oh, it smells like March. This team is cooking. We're feeling really good about this team. For as good as you felt about them, when they were up 13 points and 90 seconds left, you feel as bad, if not even worse, about this team now. They can't win big games on the road. They cannot close out games. And who's to blame? Well, when it's this bad, it's a little bit of everyone. Look, A.J. Hogarth had a fine game, but he makes that free throw at the end of the game. We're having a very fun podcast right now. We're all celebrating. We're cracking beers. We're talking about, hey, let's go take that sixth seed. Hey, let's get ready for a double buy in the Big Ten tournament. But clickety-clank, clickety-clank, the free throw did not fall. And, uh, yeah, it, it was just unbelievable. And, okay, so not to just keep on rehashing the first uh, or the last 90 seconds of the game. Let's talk about the first half as well because there were some errors done there as well. Look, the game was in overtime. It just took one possession for this to be a different game. And, okay, how about the stretch of seven possessions in the first half where six of them turned into turnovers, okay? Iowa went into the break with 12 points off of turnovers. I mean, what what can you say? That, like, yeah, it was just old-fashioned Michigan State road game basketball, it felt like. Bad turnovers, letting the other team get way too many offensive rebounds, not seeing anything from your big men. Like, it was just a rerun of what we've seen so far this year. But, hey, for the longest time, you saw Tyson Walker bail you out. Another game where Tyson Walker has 30 points and the team can't do anything about it. He did the same thing against Purdue. Oh, sorry, couldn't close that game either. He did the same thing today in Iowa City. Fantastic game, completely wasted performance, and that is just sickening. Jaden Akins, game of the season, 21 points for him. Uh Uh-oh, couldn't do anything there because, well, we just can't close out. Joey Hauser played incredible. Malik Hall off the bench, 16 points. He played outstanding. Doesn't matter. Does not matter (laughs) because you can't close out games. You don't want to use timeouts. You, You see your whole team in a boat sinking, and you don't want to even throw them a single buoy until you could see just the tops of their head in the water. Great call. Great call. <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm sorry. I, I don't know. That was, uh, I, I don't know what to say. I mean, that's stupid. I just talked for nine straight minutes. Clearly, I do know what to say, but that, that was the worst game in a very, very long time. And we've seen some losses this season. We've seen some losses last season. We've seen some losses two seasons ago. No loss is worse. I felt like this. Since watching Ben Patton go out for a 25-yard field goal or whatever it was to send Michigan State to a bowl game and 
missed that one too. Uh, I have not felt like that since that. Uh, it's that was crazy. I just hope this team can rebound and get right for Nebraska. It was a solid team, and that's all you have to be for a road opponent for Michigan State. You just have to be somewhat solid, and you will probably win that game. Proof is in the pudding. We've seen enough of it. And then Ohio State at home. Hey, maybe they want to end their season. I don't win. I don't know. It it, it doesn't matter. Great performances. All for nothing. All for nothing. No, oh, hold on. Yeah, sorry. Hold on. We got to I got to uh, talk about FanDuel Sports, I believe, here in a hot second. This is a great transition into an ad read. I'm just I'm just so lifeless right now. I just god, I can't believe what we just saw. Oh man, god, I'm an idiot. That was so stupid having that video. Anyway, no, I got to talk your ear off about LinkedIn jobs. That's right. You want to go put some work in, unlike Michigan State in the last 90 seconds of regulation, I suggest you go to LinkedIn. And as a small business owner or hiring manager, you know that success in 2023 all depends on the team members you surround yourself with. You heard my kid crying in the background right there. He just caught wind of the game as well. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs with LinkedIn Jobs. You can hire qualified candidates more efficiently by matching open roles with people who have skills, values, and experience to help you achieve your goals. LinkedIn Jobs helps you quickly attract qualified candidates to uh, your open roles with targeting tools. They go beyond resume data by using insights from your job post company and their 875 million member profiles to put your post in front of the most qualified candidates. What are you waiting for? Hop onto LinkedIn Jobs. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. That's LinkedIn.com slash Lockdown College. Terms and conditions across, <laughs> apply. Ah, a cry. That's not, I'm actually going to go cry right now. Oh, my God. You, you got to be 